680's Richard Southern joins us now. Hello, Richard. Hi, Cynthia. How are you? Awesome. You? Not too bad. Not too bad. All right. Down to business now. A major ruling by the CRTC today that has declared the Internet a basic service. What is that going to mean to the average Canadian? Well, the aim here, Cynthia, is to have all Canadians get access to high-speed Internet. That's what the CRTC wants. Currently, about 80% of the country have access to high-speed broadband. We have that here in Toronto. They don't have it, though, in a lot of rural areas in the country. And so the CRTC says, hey, all Canadians have the right to high-speed Internet, just like they have the right to make a telephone call. So that's what's at the heart of this. Uh, the Internet service providers will also be required to offer unlimited data options for fixed broadband services. Some anti-poverty groups wanted the CRTC to set a, a basic low price for broadband Internet, and the... Uh, Regulators stopped short of doing that, Cynthia, so didn't set a, a minimum price. But again, the aim here to have everyone in the country get access to high-speed Internet access. What is it going to cost the big companies to get that in rural areas? Yeah, it's not clear what it's going to cost. They did, though, uh, announce that to pay for the improvements, uh, the CRTC will uh, stop subsidizing voice services and will start subsidizing broadband instead. So it sounds like the CRTC is going to help the service providers financially to uh, make this happen. All right, just a few days till Christmas. Have you done your shopping? Are you finished? Uh, just a few little things. Ah. I think I'm finished. I hope so. Okay, well, for Gotta those who malls, haven't no. even started, don't worry. Some online, <laughs> online retailers are catering to the procrastinators out there. Yeah, panic not if you haven't stopped, uh, started. It's going to cost you a little bit extra, though, but you can do this. Uh, Amazon has been expanding its prime uh, same-day delivery service. It is available here in Toronto, same-day delivery. You're going to pay a bit extra for it. Uh, they also have Amazon, what's called the Procrastinator's Delight Program. <laughs> <laughs> it's going to deliver... Pro Deliver a package is up to 11:59 p.m. on Christmas. Uh, Pure Later Canada says if you want same-day delivery, delivery in this country, you have to get that package shipped by midnight tonight. That's if you're using Pure Later. Uh, what you need to know here, Cynthia, if you're buying stuff online, pay attention to where it's being shipped from. If it's from Europe or China, you're probably not going to get it in time. If it's from Canada or the U.S., you may. So you might. still a little yeah. bit of time. You know, I never understand those people that start their Christmas shopping on Christmas Eve and they're in the malls, like I've losing their minds. You've done, I've done that. that. It's, it's me and a bunch of other guys making okay. a mad scramble. It, yes, I, I hate to generalize, but it is usually men, of course. <laughs> we, work, we work best under pressure, Cynthia. Well, there that's you how go. We do that, that's a good comeback, a good save. <laughs> All right, Amazon is opening a big cloud computing facility in Montreal, and it's because of Ontario's high hydro rates. Yeah, you know the opposition at Queen's Park is uh, going to be on about this, I would think. Amazon if only they were sitting. That's right. Yes. I mean, well, Amazon has chosen Montreal as its first cloud computing data center, and it's passing over Ontario because we think of the high electricity rates here. These data centers use a lot of power, mm -hmm. and Amazon rep actually told the Ottawa citizen that they chose Quebec because of low-cost hydroelectric power. Uh, the Bank of Montreal out today saying that Quebec Back enjoys a shocking advantage over other provinces like Ontario because of hydro rates. So this, of course, a growing political problem for Kathleen Wynne and her government. Absolutely. And that one we're going to hear lots more about in the future. Yeah. Now, IKEA, I'm quite intrigued by this story. It's warning teenagers the slumber party is over. What exactly does that mean? So apparently this is a thing. Kids around the world have been spending the night illegally in IKEA. And it was kind of sparked, we think, by the this video we're looking at two uh, young Belgian guys who you know showed up at an Ikea late in the day picked a place to hide waited for the employees to leave and then they had the store to themselves ah. you know, they were jumping on the beds they picked beds to sleep in and Ikea says they've seen 10 such incidents around the world and they wanted to stop they say take your slumber parties elsewhere Ikea Canada recently informing us that sales were very strong in this country and they're planning a big expansion but keep the sleepovers somewhere else is what no they're saying no slumber parties allowed. All right, good to know. Mark Zuckerberg is showing off Facebook's new assistant. I like this one. Yeah, it's kind of like Siri. They're coming out with their own artificial intelligence uh, system, and it has a voice, Cynthia, that we'll all recognize. Have a listen. Good morning, Jarvis. Good morning, Mark. It's Saturday, so you only have five meetings. Room temperature is set to a cool 68 degrees. Earlier this year, I started building a simple AI to help run our home. I talked to Jarvis using this app I built. It uses artificial intelligence to understand me and figure out what to do. Max woke up a few minutes ago. I'm entertaining her. All right, let's go check on her. 
Kind of a fun video here. They actually have the uh, the Morgan Freeman artificial intelligence making fun of Nickelback at one point. So this is something we could see uh, from Facebook. Research has indicated that it's often the attitude of AI rather than the voice that people pay attention to. However, companies in the past have faced criticism for favoring female voices for this. So you can't really go wrong, Cynthia, when you, you get the Morgan Freeman to do one of your voiceovers. And he has one of the think. most beautiful voices out there right now. Yeah. And just phenomenal voice. And he's picking on... Poor Nickelback, just like the cops out what in PEI. Poor That's Nickelback. Right. They were What's forcing going on there? forcing bad drivers to listen to Nickelback. So a lot of hate on for Nickelback right now. Yeah, they're gonna get a complex. <laughs> and a good Canadian band. Well, not that I'm a fan, I must say. But anyways, that's beside the point. Okay, all TTC stations now have Presto. I have one. Do you have a Presto card? No, I think no? I'm going to have to get one, though. You should get one. It's yeah. great uh, when it works. But that means you'll soon be able to use Apple and Android to pay instead of Presto to use the better way. Yeah, that's right. You'll be able to wave your phone at these uh, Presto devices and pay for a single TTC ride. So you can basically use your phone, your Apple Pay, your Android Pay, pay to get on a, a bus, a streetcar, or a subway in the near future. And uh, more and more Canadian businesses are adopting this uh, sort of electronic pay. Other transit systems, such as the London Transit Commission in the U.S., UK also support NFC payments like this. So this is a cool feature of Presto coming out soon. Interesting. Very interesting. All right, Richard, that's great. Thank you very much.